everyone, welcome. Um, my name is Molly Carriglin of the Yupik and Irish people, and I would just like to take a moment to honor my mother, Karen Brooks of Manly Hot Springs, and our ancestors from Tununik at the Kamchatka Peninsula and Finland. I'd also like to honor my father, Floyd Brooks of Nenana, and our ancestors from Oregon and Kerry County, Ireland. Um, it is a privilege to be here today broadcasting from the lands of the Kinnick tribe of the Denina Atna peoples. And I'd just like to take a moment before we start class to reflect on the lands that we all reside in and the resilient peoples that came before and also continue to inhabit our lands. Koyana, thank you. So today I am really excited about the recipe. Um, we're going to be doing edible flowers. And as you can see on my other screen, I've got um, dandelions, rose petals, and I found some bluebells that we'll be using as well. So the recipe today is going to be a sweet recipe and it's a pancake recipe, sourdough pancakes. And actually, I'm going to use some of the leftover batter to make a little simple cake um, that you can use the same batter for and just make a simple um, fresh flour fruit cake. So let's begin. I've got um, the dandelion flowers here. I We'll show this camera as well. I didn't separate the petals from the sepals um, so that I can show you that process. And then here is the fresh petals already separated from the sepals. So what we're gonna do is to, to separate it, to decrease the bitterness because of lot. If you've ever picked a dandelion, you might notice that it's got the milk in the stem and that can be bitter. It's great for a lot of things and you can put it straight on a bug bite, um, which I often do to decrease some of the itching. But to separate it for eating the flower, I just grab the bottom of the sepal and then separate it so that you get all of these fluffy petals. And then I'll discard the green base because that will just add a lot of bitterness to the sweet dish that I'm not really looking for. So do a couple more. You can see that just comes off pretty easy. And then I'll add that to my pile. So we're gonna use two cups of fresh dandelion petals. And it sounds like a lot, but it's not. It will incorporate quite well. And I actually find that it binds the pancakes together really nicely. Um, so before we do that, I'm going to make my flax eggs. So in my recipes, I really like to make plant-based recipes. And anytime I say flax eggs, you can substitute one for one for regular eggs if you have them, or if you don't have access to the flax eggs. So to let them have time to congeal, I'm going to mix them now so that once we're ready to mix the batter, it'll all be incorporated. And I've got three tablespoons flax ground and nine tablespoons of just water, plain water, and we're just gonna mix it in. So we'll stir it up and let it have time to congeal. Uh, flax is a mucilaginous plant, so um, when mixed with water, it will thicken and have that wonderful egg-like consistency that will keep everything combined when we cook it. So here will be my mixing bowl. And I would like to add, um, well, first off, we're going to mix the flour with some water. This is a fourth cup flour, and that's just to feed the, the sourdough so that once I add the sourdough, it has some food to help it bubble up and eat on. And then, um, just a cup and a cup of water plus a teaspoon. So, 
So I've picked dandelion because it's so abundant this time of year and it actually grows on almost every continent. Um, it's a plant that was one of the first herbs I learned. Um, I love it for so many reasons, but one of my favorite things about it is I feel like uh, it's the ultimate subsistence food. You, anywhere you are in the world, you can find an identified dandelion and you can eat every single part of it. Um, the leaves, the flower, and the roots all um, not only have medicine, but they also are great food stuff. So lots of nutrition um, in there, lots of vitamin C and uh, vitamin D, but also calcium in dandelion. So it's wonderful for that. I've got my sourdough start here, um, and I just fed it last night, so I've got that good hiss when I crack it open. And I'm going to do two cups of the sourdough start. Go ahead and mix that into the flour mixture. Let it work its magic and start digesting some of the flour. And then before I go too far, I want to turn my skillet on because the key to a good pancake that will not stick to the pan is preheating the skillet and making sure, especially with cast iron, that the whole skillet is completely heated so that it's a nice even surface of heat for it to cook well on. Um, I've got a cup of flower petals list or of rose petals listed in the recipe that we've provided but um, I came across bluebells in the patch and they looked so good that I decided to add bluebells so no recipe is set in stone and any edible flower that you have that's in season, like as the season goes on, the roses will start to turn into rose hips, so the petals won't be available. Um, but other things like the chamomile, uh, or also known as pineapple weed, that will start to come into season, and then you can just use chamomile instead. I am going to mix in the half cup of rose, stir that into the batter, and then I'm saving half of the cup so that we can top our pancakes afterwards with it. Um, we've got the two cups of dandelion and I'm just gonna spoon that in there. It's a little over two cups, so I'm gonna save some also as a garnish. Mix that in. And we've got a teaspoon of vanilla here. I'm going to add the vanilla. I would use them as soon as possible if you did freeze them. And because they're not in um, some type of substrate to, to kind of lock in and prevent freezer burn. Um, so what I've noticed is making something with it, like you could even make the flower part of this batter, add the petals and that's it. Freeze that so that all the petals are encased in, some, in that substrate of the, of the flour mixture. And then free a thought when you're ready, then add all the other ingredients like the sourdough and the, the vanilla and the salt, all that. Then I'm gonna add some salt. I hope that answered your question. One teaspoon of salt. And because these flowers have, have a natural sweetness, I'm not adding any sugar to the batter. The, the sourdough already has plenty of, um, of that initial sweetness. The sweetness of the petals, I feel is plenty. And especially if you like syrup or sweet things topped on your pancakes, then there's really no need to add extra sweet. And so that's the way I like to do it. Um, 
that's all the main ingredients. Now I'm going to just check the flax eggs. And you can see it's gotten kind of gloopy, and that's perfect. So we want that, that gloopiness to, um, to make those flax eggs. So I'm going to use coconut oil as my um, grease for the pan because it has a really high cook point and I just like its taste. It also imparts like a little sweet flavor. So I'm gonna add that to the pan, melt it up, and I'm just going to ladle some of this onto the hot skillet. And I will just take a big scoop, put it straight on the pan, and then I'm actually going to turn it up a little bit. My trick with pancakes is I cover it so that it cooks faster, but also more evenly, and it tends to fluff a little better. So I'm going to let this cook um, just at usually a couple minutes on, on each side. But what I'm going to look for on the pancake itself is the bubbles will start to form, and then near the center, these bigger bubbles start to form. When the outer bubbles pop, but the inner bubbles haven't popped, that's like a perfect golden brown. And then I'll flip. I also wanted to talk about um, some of the properties of these plants. So rose is one of my favorite plants ever. It is beautiful and almost every part of the rose plant is also edible. Most people use the rose hips and the rose hips are amazing. Three rose hips is equal to an orange for vitamin C, lots of vitamin C in that. And it's quite tasty, the uh, rose hip jellies, um, rose hip ketchup, all of these options for rose hips. But with the flowers, they have slightly different property. The flowers are cooling. It's, um, it's used in the heat of the summer, not only topically, but internally to help cool us down. So on these hot summer days that we have, adding rose to the diet will actually help cool us from our food, which is just amazing that food can help us assist, can assist with that, uh, regulating our body temperature, even though we, um, you know, we don't need a cold glass of ice water necessarily to help cool us down. And uh, topically, we use rose um, to cool rashes. Um, if someone has acne that's really red and inflamed, you could use it on your face that way. And yeah, rose has so many uses. And also you can peel um, the thorns off of the stem and actually eat the stems. It's not the tastiest part of the plant, but if you needed to, you could eat the stems of the rose as well. So I'm gonna just check on this. The bubbles are starting to form on the outer edge. So I'm gonna put that cover back on, and let it work, work some more there on the heat. And uh, yes, so rose, lovely scent. Um, our Arctic rose is, is really powerful because it has a lot of antioxidants um, inherent from the amount of sunlight that we have during our summers. And the, it's, yeah, just all around amazing. If anyone ever has a bug bite that's really inflamed and bugging them, you can just pick a petal, a rose petal off and, you know, push it right on to the, the bug bite. And because of its cooling and astringent properties, it will actually cool down the influence of the itching because it's usually that like histamine response, that, that itchiness or the, um, the, the blood flowing and the heat building that actually makes us itch it. The, the bite itself. So um, yeah, and it's perfectly the, the right size. Um, and if you wanted this to work even faster, you could pop a couple leaves in your mouth, chew it up. It's what's called a spit poultice. And if it's your own spit, it doesn't matter. And then you can just smack that uh, quick chew right onto the, the bug bites, especially bigger bites, and then top it with a, a whole petal. And that works really, really well. 
So those are some other options. I am going to uncover my pancake and it's looking pretty perfect. And with the flowers, the bubbles aren't as pronounced as with the, like a regular pancake. So you just kind of have to look between the petals and see that there are these, these bigger bubbles there at the center. And this is about perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and then flip it. I'm gonna let it cook a little bit uh, less on this side and the middle will puff up slightly. So we're gonna let that cook and our decoration. And then I'll go ahead and show you guys here the rose buds in various stages of opening. Um, and actually what I had left over from last season because I like to pick enough plants that I have to use throughout the whole season. So last year was an abundant rose harvest and I was able to pick a bunch of rose buds before they opened. And trying to use all of those stores before I pick more this year so that nothing goes bad, everything gets used. I had leftover dried rose buds for tea and I ended up grinding them up and I made rose ghee. So ghee is just a clarified butter. So this is actually um, blended rose bud incorporated into the ghee. So it's got this beautiful pink color um, that I will use to top the pancakes with. I'm checking the pancake, looks perfect. There, excellent. We've got the crisp browns. And I'm going to spoon up my next pancake. There, really that's the sizzle I wanna hear. The last one, it wasn't quite as hot as I prefer it. Um, so yeah, the, the, the sizzle creates a, a good crisp um, bottom. To the pancake and it just makes it so much easier to flip. Cover it up. So if anyone has any questions, I'd love to answer them. So here, I'll show it on this. We've got the petals there at the top and then right at the base, we've got that uh, right below the sepals, we've got the, the, the fruiting body. So it's like the ovary of the plant and that becomes the fruit. So this bottom part would become the rose hip itself. So by picking the bud, you, you are removing the opportunity for reproduction of the, of the rose. So no, I do not pick all of the, um, the rose buds per bush. Uh, I what I like to do is I like to kind of take an overview of the whole the whole plants and kind of calculate how many roses are forming and then I only pick you know maybe less than a fifth depending on where you're at. Um, if you're in a heavily trafficked area like a trailhead, you know, maybe just one per plant because another person might come along and pick a flower, right? That's, it's common for kids to pick flowers and just to allow the plant to continue to propagate and, um, and have babies uh, so that the, the fruit have an opportunity to drop to the ground, the forest floor, and then reseed. Um, because although they are perennials, they do still have um, a lifetime. And uh, so let me check this. Ooh, got the good sizzle. Check the bottom. A little bit longer. So yes, with the, the rose buds, I would not pick as many. With the rose petals, you're just plucking the petals off of the sepal. So you're leaving the, the fruiting body, that hip potential. And, um, and so that is a little more lenient. And especially this time of year when most of the roses are open, um, 
they've already had the opportunity to get pollinated. They've already, um, they're pretty loose actually. So a strong breeze could just blow the petals away anyway. And, um, and especially if most of the plant has developed to the point where uh, all of them are open, yeah. In that instance, I might pick the majority of the petals, and but making sure that I leave um, that fruiting body so that it still has an opportunity. And then, um, you know, in the center, that's where the pollen is. There will still be the pollen center um, if you don't disturb it so that bees will still be attracted to it. And although they are drawn to color, um, they also memorize plants and they will communicate to the other bees where the, the, the delicious plants are. So um, once it's you know been a little while that the plants have been open, the flowers have been open, um, I don't worry as much about just collecting the petals. Flip my pancake. Really should have greased it. My bad. <laughs> but hey, we cook and we learn. So much for my pretty little cakes. <laughs> and there. This one's a little bit darker. Still tasty though. And I'll let that cook. So I'm only going to make the two cakes today. Um, and you can see how much batter I have left, right? So that's plenty of batter. And actually what I'm going to do is make a cake. So same batter, I'm going to have a greased, I pre-greased this uh, cake pan. And I've actually made one in preparation. So this is what it'll look like when finished. And you can see all of the beautiful petals in there. And I had some cherries, which are in season that I need to, needed to eat. So I just have the cherries, got the pit out, and, um, and just plop them right on top for a little added sweetness. And I wouldn't frost this cake. I would just serve as is. Um, it's most delicious fresh out of the oven, but uh, it's it's a great to go snack. I would bring it with me, um, you know, for a day picnic, something like that. And uh, and yeah, it's just it's quite delicious. And if you need a little sweetener, you can use that same herbal syrup. And. Also, that needs to cook just a little bit longer. So the center is done. And I'm just gonna preheat my oven to 350 so that the rest of the batter can be used as the cake. And as that second cake finishes, I'm going to grab my cake pan and um, we just got fresh strawberries in. So, uh, you know, whatever fruit you wanna use, um, the first fruit I started using when I put them in this cake batter is pitted fruits like, like cherries or like the nectarines, peaches, that type of thing. But really any fruit works. Um, put a couple at the bottom. And then I'll top it with the batter. And since it's just the sourdough as the leavening agent, it's not going to rise a bunch, but it will rise some. So we don't want to have it too full, but I still have some space there in the pan for it to grow. And then I'm going to top it with more fruit. And you can really pack in the fruit here. Um, I like to kind of space it out so that each slice would get a fruit piece, and we'll put one in the center. It's, I think they're beautiful. Um, I think it's one of the best summer treats to have. Um, it's just super easy. You've already got the batter. And especially um, if you're just craving pancakes, you can make yourself some pancakes 
and then have the batter left over for your loved ones. So as the oven preheats, I'll put it in the oven and it only it only takes about a half hour to bake at 350 um, or until golden brown. Each oven has their little temperature fluctuations. So yes, I would um, just keep an eye on it, maybe set the timer for 20 minutes and then see if the top is golden brown. And once it's golden brown, it's done. The center puffs slightly and, um, and then you're ready to enjoy some cake. And uh, you know, if you decide to line with parchment paper, then you can actually just flip the cake straight out um, and present it like that. So I'm going to grab this pancake. And it's very hot, so I need my oven mitt. There, we'll see a little bit more. Turn off the oven. And since this first one was so much prettier, <laughs> I'm gonna put that one on top. So we've got our cooked pancakes. I'm going to take a little bit of this rose ghee and place it on top. I'm a big fan of the classic butter and syrup on my pancakes. So that's what I'm going to add to mine today. And then grab some flowers. And I'm actually just gonna top the whole thing with the last of, and this is enough if you were to make the whole batch of batter into pancakes. So every everybody who is having pancakes gets some beautiful edible flowers on top. Um, but I'm actually going to save the rest of this half cup so that once the um, the fruit cake is finished, the fruit flower cake is finished, I can top it with that. And it's just it kind of just adds that little pizzazz that makes it look so beautiful and even more delicious. Um, so we're going to crack open my freshly made, ooh, and it really sealed. So I need some help, perfect. Yes, so it popped, we had it sealed, and this is the herbal syrup. Just gonna drizzle that on. And we've got everything from the garden, pancakes except for the flour. And this is the finished product. So this is um, very delicious. I wish you could all taste it, <laughs> but uh, you'll just have to take my word for it until you try it yourself. And Koyana, thank you so much. <laughs>